Hello folks, welcome to the end of the week, it is Friday, congratulations to you for making it all the way to the end. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below, the Patreon button is also down below if you want to be involved in our prize draw, which takes place on the 6th of August, Sunday the 6th of August, jump on there, and if you become a patron, you can be involved in that prize draw. The top prize is £50 worth of free models from our lovely partners over at Composite Games, and a Dark Angels uh, Deathwing box set they do a lot to help the channel so if you're going to get any sort of hobby supplies or hob hobby stuff over the next few days make sure you go and give them some love use the promo code northern exile down below on composite games website to get yourself five percent off at checkout moving on straight into it because i've had a very 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 long week and i'm ready to just chill so Let's jump on and read some Hobby Nightmares. This isn't going to be an overly serious Hobby Nightmare day. There is one serious one that I know of. Um, the others have been picked out for me, and, and apparently they're very good. So let's read them, shall we? Uh, Coffin says, and this is a, a, a somebody from my Patreon, so thank you very much, young man, for uh, helping support the channel. And hopefully, best of luck with the prize draw. When we do do the prize, the prize draw, we will also do a charity live stream every month. I want to make those get bigger and bigger and bigger as we go along. Because it's really important that, that uh, there are more charities out there who can help dudes with mental health. Uh, that, that's what we're dedicating ourselves to. That's what we're, we're trying to, to get on top of. So, you know, there we are. So Coffin says, uh, North, hey man, hope all is well with you. Doing all right here, or though it's reaching its, you know, stay the hell indoors season in, in Arizona. Oh my God, yeah, I can imagine that's going to get hot over there. All the more reason to get some games in. Anyway, got a couple of hobby nightmares for you with a single theme. Douchebaggery. Story number one. Last year, I was hanging at my local game store. Now, uh, now the one at which I currently and proudly work. Awesome, man. In walks our first antagonist. Let's call him MD. No, not a doctor. Around the store, we refer to him as Mopey Dick. This may sound quite harsh, but it's quite accurate as he can be. MD sulks around the shop with an attitude of, woe is me, and I don't really want to be here unless I'm forcing others to scoop in magic. He's just one of those guys that has self-pity written all over him. Dude, I've met a few, and those guys suck the energy out of a room. You could be having the time of your life, and one of these guys walks in, and that's it. You know, the energy's gone. Everyone just moping, everyone just, oh, where was life? The one thing that really does get these guys out of there is if somebody just laughs at them. I don't mean like, that's going to sound harsh. What I, what I mean is, right, if someone just goes, oh, I see the, the, the atmosphere took a turn, ah, and, and says something openly awkward like that, you just get you laughing again and you're right back to square one, you know what I mean? You don't laugh at them. You, 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 you laugh at the situation that's been caused. Um, you never know what these guys are dealing with, though. So it's always worth being over there and saying, hey, how are you? You know, what, what's going on? And, and are you all right? But as long as you, if you start getting the sense that this guy's just this way inclined, then, yeah, you know, uh, but deflect it with humor. Say, oh, oh the, the atmosphere is definitely, you know, it's like that kind of a thing. Because uh, there are guys like this. There are guys whose natural demeanor sucks all energy out of a room. These guys can get better, and the way to get to make them get better is to make sure that they, they know how to do it, and make sure that you go over there and you speak to them. But if you get to the stage where they're just mopey, and it's not, you know, this is just who they are, then, yeah, just deflect it with humor, man. Um, don't, don't, don't let them suck the energy out of a room. Anyway. He only plays two overpowered decks in Magic the Gathering, and scoops if he doesn't get his way after a couple of terms. Uh, scoops, I'm assuming, means you just pick up your cards and walk away. You scoop up your cards and walk away. Anyway, MD walks in the shop and gets his deck ready for any unsuspecting magic victims. About five minutes later, in walks a group of wonderfully kind, charismatic, and overall excited Magic the Gathering players. Now, these Magic players are an organised group from the intellectually disabled community. I think that's the latest PC term. Led by one amazing gentleman. One of those excited players sits down for a game and Mopey walks over and casually asks if he'd like to play a game of Commander. One-on-one -on -one Commander. This dude, Alex, wholeheartedly agrees and sits down to play Mopey. 
A full two turns later, I see Alex pick up his deck and walk away, defeated. I swing over and see Al and, and ask Alex if he'd like to play a game with me instead. He reluctantly agrees, and so we begin. Now, we are five turns deep, and I'm currently not letting him win, but I know it's important for him to get a victory here. I play some off moves and wait until he gets to a point where he can win after a good amount of work. He wins, and I excitedly celebrate his victory with him. Shook his hand and got up with greater confidence than, than previously with, with Mopey Dick. That's cool, man. I love that. I, overly, I overhear Alex bragging with a good light-hearted light intent to the, to the group leader that he beat me and got a great game in. Made me feel really good. Here's where I walked over to Mopey and quietly asked how the game went. Oh, I won, he said casually. Wow. So you don't think to, you didn't think to let him get more moves in or, or give him the earned win, I asked. No, where's the honour in that? If I let him win or go easy on him, then it's not an honourable game. Then he won't learn anything. Yeah, but it seems like he didn't have a good time, I said. Well, that's the game, I guess side mopey well here's the thing here's the thing right here's the thing i see i see his point i see his point you don't just go up to a random guy in a store and let him win a game that you're playing right you play the game in a good natured the way he falls down here he doesn't play the game in a good natured or fair way that's the problem the problem isn't that he won it's the, it's the way that he won it right he won immediately with, with no preamble and, and no joy, no no having fun, none of that. He, just, he was just a dick about it. He won and he moved on. Right? Cool. So winning isn't the problem here. I, I think you've touched on the wrong thing. You've said, you know, you didn't think to just let him win. Because I would have said the same thing to you. But no. Why would I just let him win? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, why would I just let him win? He's right, like you, you don't uh, learn anything unless you're playing the game properly, you know? And he probably learned more by losing that game and then winning against you than he, than he ever would have done just being handed his first game, you know? If you were handed your first game, you, it just embeds your mistakes. When you're learning um, uh, martial arts or you're learning... Um, I, I've, recently, I've recently started swordsman training, which is really, really cool, but they always say... And there's something that's used in The Witcher 3, which I loved when I replayed it. It's never train alone. It only embeds your errors. It literally only embeds what you're doing wrong. You need someone to show you what you're doing wrong by beating your ass. If this guy comes in and plays magic and is people fold for him all the time, he's going to think he's the best Magic the Gathering player ever. And then he comes up against a dude who actually knows what he's doing and gets his shit pushed in, right? Not great. So yeah, don't just lie down for people in games but play the game in the, in the spirit it's meant to be played and if they do lose say hey thank you for the game man i really enjoyed it you're an amazing player you're awesome you know i really enjoyed that game commiserate with them if luck doesn't go his way as well dude oh man that was close if that hadn't have happened oh man it would have been so different right play the game in the spirit it's meant to be played but don't just let people win um unless they've had a few losses already like you did what you did was right He'd had a few losses already and seemed a bit down. You went in there like a chad and, you, and, you, and you, you threw a game for him. That's fine. But the first game he plays, you know, most of the games he plays shouldn't be having people lying down for him, you know. All right, story two in the Douchebaggery series. I've got a buddy who started playing Sigmar and 40k with us a little while back. Let's call him Texas. No way around it. He's a meta gamer through and through. Switches armies to whatever has the highest win rate. Follows the law, but doesn't care for the rule of cool. Always trying to convince others to buy units instead of what is currently good and not what's fun. Anyway, Texas no longer plays at our shop because he's gotten a reputation as the guy no one wants to play. He's a nice enough dude off the table and honestly quite a bro, but we've had a few instances where others express their discomfort of his playstyle. Even had to pull him aside to give him a talk about it being a game and making sure the other dude is having fun too. Texas is the guy who will be up an insane amount of points but still complain when a dice roll doesn't go his way. Dude, that's the worst. That's the worst. When you're getting pummeled and a guy rolls a one and goes, what is bullshit? Dude, I'd, I'd, 
you would really be tempted to just pick up your models and go, listen, dude, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. You're not playing this game in, in the spirit it's meant to be played, and you have the gall, the cheek, to stand there and bitch and moan when a slight thing, the 1% of this game that... that you know, you, you've had 98% of this game go your way, and 2% of it go against you, and you're moaning about the 2%, go fuck yourself, you know? that, that That's the kind of... I, I wouldn't be able to hold it. Honestly, I, that's the one thing I can't stand. I, I, I stand cheaters more than this. You know, if somebody's cheating, I just put them on the no playlist again. I call them out for cheating and I move on. That's it, you know. But a guy like this, dude, no. No, Be, being, being a bad loser is better than being a bad winner. Because at least when you're a bad loser, the other guy's won. The other guy's won. So at least the other guy has that. In his bow. You know what I mean? He's like, oh, at least I won that game. Even though the guy was a sore loser. You know, I put him in his place and won the game. And you can move on. If someone's a bad winner, they pummeled you. And then they start pointing in your face. Like, that could have been much worse for you. I could have done this and I could have done that. Fuck you. You know, that's even worse. Fuck these people. I hate them. I don't use the word hate. Casually. Like, it really is annoying. Ugh. He was even caught unknowingly cheating in our store run narrative campaign by having his units in reserve uh, that, that could shoot and cast spells off the board. Dude, that's not even unknowingly cheating. That's just cheating. You can't do that. But here's the story. He plays at the Crunchy Meta store in town where older dudes wear their jerseys during tournaments but still probably have their mum pick them up afterwards. That's hilarious. I, I know. I'm the same, man. I'm the same. That's the cringiest shit I've ever seen in my life. I've ever seen in my life. Oh my god. That is so right. Um, whenever I see like Vanguard Tactics or something like that wearing the little t-shirt. Like, eh, I'm on team. See oh, shut up, you fucking nerd. What are you doing? Like, <laughs> why are you wearing a fucking t-shirt? Let's have a little badge. A little badge is fine. Little armband's fine. No problem. Little wristband saying, yeah, I'm on team. Sort of walking in like you're some sort of esports legend. Like you're some sort of athlete when you're... Come on, dude. Come on. Right, we're not a motorcycle club. We don't need to wear colours. Can we just... <laughs> you're playing 40k. Stop taking it so fucking seriously, alright? You know, I, I, I get it. I get it. If you're at a tournament, I get it. At a tournament, cool. You know, do what you want at a tournament. Wear your colours. It's a professional thing, you know, you're, you're at the apex of the game, no problem. But don't go into a hobby store wearing your stupid little t-shirt saying, I'm on team, I'm on team, cockface. It's like, like, who cares, dude? No one cares. Good for you, no one cares. Literally no one cares. We're just here to roll some dice. Alright? It's the cringiest shit ever. And then they go in, I've had this before, right? Well, <laughs> can't believe I'm telling this story. Right, so I had this before, where I was running my own store, and I, some guy came in, and I, I will be honest with you, I don't know who he was, right, right, I don't know who he was, but he was wearing an orange, like, lava t-shirt, like, but it looks like a nylon, it's weird, you know, he's wearing a nylon t-shirt with, like, a, uh, with like, a, a, a what, what they called, a lanyard, oh, that's what they called, you know what I mean, the name tags, the name tags, he's got one of those on. And he's walking around. He's like, hey, guys, you know, I'm at the uh, I'm at the expo up in Birmingham. And I'm just traveling around, seeing what different stores there are, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care. Like, come in and, you know, I greet him like I do everybody. Hey, man, how's it going? You know, welcome to, welcome to Games Workshop, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, giving him all the spiel. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't need to be sold on anything. I'm just saying hello, dude. I'm saying hello. Go fuck yourself, right? The models are over there. Have fun. Right, so I, I go, I don't say that to him, but that's what I'm thinking, you know. Okay, I've got to keep my job. So I go over and I'm talking to people at the gaming table and having a, having a good time. And he comes over and stands and starts giving, uh, starts giving like, you know, pointers out. Unwanted pointers. You know, pointers out. The guys who are playing, there is a naval officer there. And there is a kid of about 14. And these two are playing and having a really good game. It was, I think if I remember correctly, it was Raven Guard Primaris against something else. Well, I can't remember what the other arm was. It might have been Necrons. I can't remember. Anyway, 
this guy comes over and he starts giving the kid pointers. And the kid's like, and this kid, right, is shit hot at 40k. He's good. He's a good player, right? And the guy he's playing against is also a pretty good player. Like a really nice, respectful guy. Um, and they're all just having, having a bit of fun. And this guy starts giving him pointers and it's like, you know, you want to like move that a little bit over there. And, sort of, and then the kid's obviously like uh, humoring him going, yeah, yeah, cool, man. No, no, yeah, cool beans. Yeah, cool. Awesome. And then eventually the guy goes, I bet you, I can't even remember what his name was. I'm going to call him James. I bet you didn't think you'd have James from team. I can't even remember what the team name was. I bet you could, didn't remember what you, I bet you can't, can't believe you've got James giving you from team so-and-so giving you tactical advice, man. You know, that's cool, huh? I just, yeah. And so from that point onwards, anyone who wears things like that, I'm just like, yeah, th this guy's like that. Like, dude, you're not a celebrity. Nobody knows who you are. This kid just looked at him like, uh, sure, cool. Like, yeah, I mean, awesome. Great. Thanks, man. Uh, can I just get on with the game? Uh, yeah, 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 fine, fine, fine. No worries, no worries. I don't want to cramp your style. Dude, you cramped it 20 minutes ago. Just go and go and away, right? Watch the game, have fun with the game, but don't give people pointers unless they ask for it, okay? Just don't. Unless they're getting things blatantly wrong and you need, they need to be told, then fine. But don't give people pointers on, on their tactical style or, or how they're using their models. Go fuck yourself, go away. If you haven't been asked, don't give the opinion. Guys in team t-shirts very often act this way. You know, I'm some sort of celebrity because I win some games of 40k. No... You're a tool, is what you are. Okay? You're a tool. If you don't go... If you go to a tournament wearing your colours, great. No problem. If you come into a store on an off day, wearing your stupid little t-shirt, like you're some sort of, you know, actual athlete, dude, get in the bin. Get in the fucking bin. I've only met one, and that was enough. But I, I still see them all the time. They're very, very full of their own self-importance. It's like, I made it onto team, you know, cockhead. I'm here now. I, I, I'm, I'm one of the best players. Like, dude, if the, other, if the other player isn't having a good good game, you're automatically one of the worst players. Sorry, this where you are. You're automatically one of the worst players if, you're, if your opponents don't have a good time. And, uh, God, it, it's one of those memories that I just... I'm not suppressed, but it's, it's just... I haven't thought of that in ages. That's... Yeah, it's one of those thoughts that sometimes I have in the shower and I go back to it and I'm I'm so embarrassed in the second hand way I sort of go, oh in the in the shower to get it out of my head. Anyway. Uh right. Uh, he plays at the Crunchy Meta store in town. Okay. Where all the dudes wear their jerseys during tournaments, but still probably have their mum pick them up afterwards. <laughs> And his latest victory was against a young guy during a local event. This particular young guy was, once again, someone with special needs. Now, we only found out about the, his latest game because he made a Twitter post bragging about his victory. Not only bragging about the win itself, but that he made the guy quit after three turns, pick up his models and leave the tournament. Needless to say, Texas has become basically a walking meme here in the store. Thanks again, North. My best to you and yours. Talk to you soon. Like, that is... So my guy, I called him James, but I, I honestly don't remember what his name was. He's one of those people where you, you try and relegate him from your brain as quickly as possible. Um, I don't even remember my guy's name, uh, but he, he didn't even become a meme. He was there for one afternoon for like two hours. But it just, it just rubbed me the wrong way. I was like, dude, your attitude stinks. Your attitude is not what the hobby is about. I don't give a shit if you go to tournaments and you win. Your attitude is not what the hobby is about. So, you know, swivel, move on. Snooky says, Dear Exiled Northerner, my name is Snooky. Okay? Yes, that is my legal name, and I would prefer it if you just called me that. I'm a Southerner. I live in the southern part of the United States, and I have a tale to spin. Since I was young, I have been the favourite child of my mum's side of the family. <laughs> just pat yourself on the back there. This was only for the fact that I was the only child of, on my mum's side. Our family is very traditional, and my mother and father's sides do not really get along. They despise one another, and my father's side has hated me for the things I enjoy since I was born. Alright, is there any hobby in here? 
Let me just uh, have a little drink of tea. Um, they have never shown any love towards me or my mother. This only got worse after their divorce. My grandfather, in particular, was specifically terrible, uh, specifically terrible to me, calling me fat and ugly, telling me I was going to die of diabetes, and constantly complaining, my uh, comparing my behaviour to that of my cousins. I was a chubby little kid. This all came to a head about a year ago when my dad began to hit me repeatedly. After a nasty incident here where I fought back, I cut all ties with his side. Since then, they have tried to contact me repeatedly, especially my grandma. Today, she called me again and I finally snapped and answered the phone with a, what do you want? She said, well, I, before I cut her off saying, go away, I don't want anything to do with you, that family or my dad, never call this number again before hanging up. Now I feel a bit guilty. Was I too harsh on her? Should I apologise? Terribly sorry to bother you. I don't know who else to ask. Okay. Um, cool. If you don't want this to be a hobby nightmare, please say on the on the on the thing because if you if you email me at hobby nightmares, I'm going to assume it's a hobby nightmare. All right. So, um, I'm going to say that it, it, there's no hobby in this, so it's not really hobby nightmare, which is why I mean I would I would normally send you an email back, just saying, hey man, you know. Sorry about this, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, let, let, let's get into it. I, if they treated you that badly, I don't think you're being harsh at all. No, there comes a time, depends how, on how old you are. I don't have any context. If you're above 21, then dude, yeah, you make your own, own choices in life. And when you're 21, that's when you're emancipated. That's when you're away from your family. You get to choose who's your family from that day on. You do. So you can literally go, no, I, I, I don't want you around me and, and move on. Like, my mum was amazingly supportive in my life. Like, she's just been an amazing person. But there are parts to her personality that were incredibly damaging to me growing up. And this is a conversation I've had to have with her as well. And it wasn't fun. It wasn't a fun conversation. She was crying. There were lots of tears. But there were certain parts of personality that she still does now. Every now and again, she catches herself. Where I just had to say, look, th th that hasn't been good for me. That has not been good for me. You're a single mother. And this is why... I'm I'm always terrified for kids growing up with just mothers, with single mothers, because, dude, you, you need that masculine presence in your life. You need that dad to 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 tell you what's you know, good old right and wrong. I know a mother can do that, but there are certain things a dad does that a mother just can't. You know, they they can't instill in you. And I just there were certain things about my upbringing when I was like that has damaged the fuck out of me, <laughs> and it's taken me until now to truly really start to get over it and i'm 35 you know i'm 35 and i'm just now really starting to work through those confidence issues and those self-worth issues and those imposter syndrome issues i have huge imposter syndrome all the time right um so i decided when i when i did therapy to, to i've had enough of this bullshit now i I'd had another thing blow up on my face in america and i'd had enough so i went to therapy and i told everybody who annoyed me everybody who 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 may have damaged me in the past i told them exactly how they did it and that they can go fuck themselves if they if they if they don't see that you know my mother being one of them and she was she stood up to it she was like okay you know she was very emotional she said no i i get that i with the way you've put that i get what you're saying i get what you're saying and i understand that and after that i forgave her for, for any behavior that might have gone in the past that's really fucked me up right and i moved on I chose to move on. Now, there wasn't anything terrible there. It wasn't any sort of abuse or anything. But it was just things that have been instilled in me that haven't been great to, to go through. Um, mainly self-worth issues, things like that, of that ilk. But I forgave her, and I moved on. And there are certain parts of personality now when if they come out, I just start laughing. And it just diffuses the entire situation. She was in here the other day, and she started getting really annoyed at, uh, oh, she asked me to fix her phone. Well, I'm trying to work, right? I'm in my office trying to work, and she comes upstairs and says, "Oh, can you can you fix my phone? It's 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 on the blitz. You know, I don't know what's going on." I said, "Yeah, fine. Yeah, give it here." And I was like, "Right, okay. Um, well, it's not signed into the internet." And da -da -da -da. and she goes, "Well, can you fix it?" And I said, "No, I need to be at your house to fix it." And she started getting quite irate at the fact that I couldn't fix it. And I just like put the phone down and started laughing at her. And she said, what? And I went, you're literally stamping your feet like a child. And she just started giggling. I went, yeah, I know, sorry. No, 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 no problem, no problem. And I said, okay, here you go, and blah, 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 and, you know, no problem. 
you know, and, and we moved on from there. Back in the day, that would have ended up in a serious argument, because I would have fa found, how dare you come into my office getting annoyed at me for not being able to fix something that you fucked up when I have to be in your house to fix it. You know, that's what I would be. I just started laughing at her, though, and it just diffused the entire situation. That, that works for us, right? So I was able to have my mother in my life. I was able to get to work past. And there are a lot of people in my life that I've cut loose and I've gone, no, listen, um, you did this. You're not remorseful. You don't see any fault in it. Go fuck yourself. Get out of my life. There have been quite a lot of people that I've done that with. Friends as well. They've been, no, 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 no. You, you use me is what you do, right? Um, I had a group of friends, quote unquote, in university who, when I was, um, I was older, Right? I was an older guy. Because you didn't put any hobby in this, I'm going to put the hobby in it. Right? So these are friends who were into the hobby when I was in university. And they were all nerds, and they were all quite closeted, and, and were quite, you know, all... You would, you would describe them as an incel. I'm not going to. But that's how you would describe them, right? So, I took a lot of these guys under my wing. I was 24. i just come out of working in a pub in Liverpool, quite a, quite a successful one. You know, I've been getting laid left, right, and center because I was a decent-looking lad and I, and I worked behind a bar, you know? So I knew I'd could, I could chat some shit. So I'd take them out with me. We'd go out and have a good time. I'd, I'd show them ropes and I'd do all that sort of stuff. And I even started uh, DMing a Dungeons & Dragons campaign because none of them had played before and they all wanted to. So we started off with a group of three and then that went to a group of five and six and an eight and then I had to split the party because it was too many. Then we had another party, so we had three parties in the same world doing different things. We'd all meet up on a Sunday and have these really cool games together. And then I'd, I'd meet up with them on a Thursday and a Wednesday, I think it was, um, to, with the other groups to have some fun. And it was great. We had some amazing times together. And eventually, they started running games on their own. That I noticed I was never invited to. Right? I was never invited to these games. And then when they went on, went on like city breaks with each other, I was never invited on that as well. When they went on nights out, I was always the one who had to organise them and had to had to you know, get everyone together. They would turn up, they would have fun, but like I was never that way. And in the end, I started pulling back. I started pulling back because I was like, no, I, I'm. That what they would ask me to do later on. They would ask me to do role playing campaigns, and then towards the end of them one or two of them would just stop turning up so we couldn't start because they were like integral to the campaign and in the end i started pulling away and saying look i'm not doing things for you if you weren't doing you're not doing anything for me right i didn't say that to them i just gradually pulled away and went okay that's fine and went on my own i found other friends and, and had fun with them right but since then and when i was working in london i i reconnected with a few of these people because they lived in london and I was working in a, in a I was, after Games Workshop, I ran a gaming bar in London. So I was there just running the, this uh, gaming bar and having fun and, and doing all that. We had tabs at this gaming bar, right? Really cool place where, where the owners were like, yeah, you can, you can drink on the job. We don't mind as long as you don't get trolleyed. We don't mind you having a buzz on at work. Um, and you got a tab each, so you can run up a little bit of a tab, but nothing too spectacular. We got like a £500 monthly limit. We'll pay that off. Because they, they were very well off, these guys. Like, we'll pay off that £500 tab. Don't worry about it. Anything above that, though, you have to you have to pay, right? So these guys turned up to my work because I asked them to. I said, let's go for a night out just to reconnect, just to, you know. I gave them a chance. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I should never... They, they drank my entire £500 worth of booze before I even finished my shift. Then I finished my shift, sat down, went back to the bar, and they said, yeah, the tab's done. You have to pay for your drinks now. So I paid for my drink, came back, you know what they did? They said, yeah, we've really got to get off now. I'll see you later, all right, bye. And they left. They left. And since that day, I've cut every single one of them out of my life. Done. Absolutely done. I've never seen one of them again. I haven't spoken to them again, right? Yeah. I have another friend who's a really good guy. And uh, when, these guys, when these friends, came, friends, quote unquote, came to Liverpool... He went and met them because he, he was around about the same place, you know. Uh, he, he went and met them in Liverpool. I didn't get an invite. My friend invited me. Like, my friend who was there invited me. They didn't. I, so I was just... I was, yeah, I'm not surprised. These guys were the biggest fucking users ever. So I cooked them out. 
when I was in London. I, I cut them out when I was in university, but then I cut them out again in London because I gave them another chance, more fool me, and just cut them out. No, you're done. Goodbye. Right? And that was it. These people don't change. They don't change. So when you're 21, where, when you're an adult, it's very, very, very important that you look at the people who deserve to be on your life and you cut out the ones who don't. If they don't deserve to be there, get rid of them. Walk away. You have legs, use them. All right? And if you think enough time's passed, maybe give them another chance. See if they've, see if they've changed. If they haven't, for me, it's two strikes. And you can't do three strikes. It's too, it's too like, devastating to your... To your to your 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 self worth, your self you know your your mental health. Two strikes, for me. If you do the first one, I'll give you like a, a couple of years on on cool off, and then we'll get back together again. If I think you're if you were a cool person, there were there were there were either mitigating circumstances or you're a cool person aside from that being a user. Do it again. We're done. We're absolutely done. I never want to speak to you again. I never want you around at my house. You're not welcome around me. Whatever situation I'm in, I don't want to be around you. I will leave. Because I know you're a user. I can't trust you to go on a night out with you because I might end up dead. Because you will leave me for dead at a moment's notice. Right? Those aren't your friends. And the same thing goes for your family. And as I just said with my mum, my mum was on the flip side of that. I told her what was what was wrong and what was bothering me and where a lot of my, my, my damage comes from. Right? Not all her, you know, but she, she, she was part of it right part of that thing so she she was able to say hey uh yeah i get that completely and you know i i want to move on i want to make sure that you're okay i want to move on and i accept that i apologize i'm so sorry for doing that to you blah 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 and we moved on right and she's been great since then it, it slips out every now and again and i just laugh or i just wag my finger and go you're doing that fucking thing again and she knows and she goes yeah i know sorry you know, she doesn't have to be on a, on a, on a tiptoes with me or anything like that. It's fine. I just call it out when I see it, and we're fine. So if somebody's honestly remorseful and wants to be back in your life, maybe, maybe, if your grandma had, had, had gotten back in touch with you and she wasn't the cause of all this trauma, let her in, dude. At least speak to her. See what she's got to say. The only thing you did wrong in there is that you didn't let her finish her sentence. You don't know what she she was about to say. Talk to her. Let her know you're open for talking. And the minute you sense any of this, be honest and say, look, I'm not dealing with this anymore. I'm an adult. I'm cutting you out. Goodbye. And put the phone down. That's it. That's it. You need to be a man and look out for your own interests mentally. That's what you need to do. Okay? But give her a chance. You don't know what she's about to say. All right, moving on. How cool is that? You did a hobby nightmare that had no hobby in it, and I injected the hobby into it. Fucking great. Uh, <laughs> Starkiller Marek says, Greetings, Mr. North. Starkiller Marek's here, back to update you with my first D&D &D game since you gave me advice on my other hobby nightmare. Apologies if it's a long one, pun fully intended. You'll understand soon. It was a great experience, and I would love to share the story of how one joke went completely off the rails, earning our orc his new nickname. Recently, one of my friends had his 21st birthday. So for his birthday, he wanted me and a few other close friends to come over so he could DM a game of Dungeons & Dragons. A 15th level, super laid back one shot. It was about having fun, not being serious. I agreed to the game because it was his birthday and because I was the one that introduced him to D&D years ago. With a simple intro session I made to show him the ropes. He told me that intro game was why he got into D&D &D in the first place. He said my story and puzzle design was unforgettable and that he wished I played and DM'd more these days. When he told me that I knew I needed to get back into the game. I wanted to finally break the, la the last of the chain I had placed on myself after my interactions with the girl from my other story. Alright, well, hopefully I remember that story. While we were making characters, I decided to play my Doom Slayer that I never got to. A while back, I even bought a mini I designed in Hero Forge for the character. Picks attached, show them if you want. Okay. I can't not show them, because uh, that's the law these days. So... Da -da 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 -da. 
<laughs> looks pretty cool. I like him. All right, let's. Uh... I really hate the way that 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 Chrome now does downloads. Like, it just throws them on on another side of the. Got to do so many other other things to get your get your pictures. Right, uh, Doom Guy. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at him close up. Do, 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 do. Again, when we're photographing miniatures, half of your picture is not the miniature. Do you know what I mean? Photograph the miniature. I don't. I don't care what your wallpaper looks like. Yeah, I like him. That's a medieval. Uh, that's cool, man. That's cool. That's a medieval doom. That I want that model, man. I want that model in an Imperial Guard army right now. That's that's the shit. That that's brilliant. I love that. <laughs> I absolutely love that. I'm gonna leave that up. I'm gonna leave that up for the rest of the time. Um, I put that thing down there. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna leave that up for the rest of the video. Let me see if I can do this as well. See the back of him. Oh yeah, look at that. Just the pose and everything. That's awesome. Oh man. Well done. Well done. Anyway. <clears throat> um I chose an artificer. So I could use a double barrel shotgun, the super shotgun, and a great sword, the crucible from Doom Eternal. Once we started, the story was that they were all contractors hired to investigate a cult in a cave that was, suspect that was suspected to be kidnapping people from the nearby villages. Inside the cave, we came to a very long hallway and a door to our right. We chose to go to the door on the right first. One of the players decided to bust open the door because it was locked. When the door was busted open, we found a guard with his pants down on a toilet. So naturally, as no one <laughs> as no one does when the restroom door is absolutely obliterated before their very eyes, the guard starts to run with his pants down around his ankles, leaving a brown trail behind him. The restroom was unnaturally long, led to the left, and then a dead end. The guard, having evacuated his bowels thoroughly, tried to fight us, but I trapped him in, in, a, in a force field and we interrogated him for information. During the interrogation, the birthday boy's brother says, I want to inspect his wiener size. Why? Why? Because we were joking uh, about how his pants were still down. Well, he rolls poorly, so the DM decides that it's the biggest, uh, biggest one the brother's character has ever seen. He then suggests that one of us roll, and we actually find it, it's, it's actually quite small. <laughs> So the running joke was that the, the brother's character had a tiny peen. This single joke started the ball rolling for our orc player's idea. Alright, cool. We continued once we stopped laughing, and this was where the orc, orc's backstory came into play. His backstory was that he believed he was physically affected by what he ate. Like the saying, you are what you eat. So... He ate, a multi he ate multiple spell tomes and learned how to be a magical barbarian orc. Given this information, the orc decided to eat the guard's wiener like, well, a wiener, thus increasing the size of his own penis. We rolled a d12 to figure out how many inches he gained. The guard, before being killed and consumed, informed us that the cult leaders were trying to open a portal to another dimension to speak with their god, Val. Of course, he's called Val. I hope you all die. They needed villagers to sacrifice to, to, to power up the portal, hence why all the villagers had gone missing. We continued, and the orc kept eating the roasted hot dogs of our enemies like it was a summer bo uh, barbecue till we got to the final room that housed the portal. We were not quick enough to stop the portal from opening. When we got into the room, a massive dragon st uh, stuck its claws through, swept up by all the cult members, and ate them like Vienna sausages. The orc was mad that the dragon got those sausages and not him. Naturally, we jumped through the portal and fought the dragon. The orc's focus, aside from killing the dragon, became cutting its massive dong off and, <laughs> and consuming it to grow his own. So we fight, 
We succeed, and the orc takes his prize. The orc indulged in his spoils of war, and we once again rolled to see what he gained. Since the dragon was dragon, we rolled multiple d12s this time. By the end of it all, the, the orc had an 186 inch swang. <laughs> I decided to make him a pair of pants that had a piece of, of a bag of holding in it so he could tuck his meat missile away when not using it as a club. Thus earning him the nickname, a reference to, multi, to Monty Python, Biggest Dickus. Our orc player turned Dungeons and Dragons into Dixby Dragon and we couldn't stop laughing all night. It was great to be back playing some D&D, especially with those friends that I hadn't played with in years. Thank you for your advice and helping me remember why I love D&D. Brilliant, man. Yeah, no problem. That's not the kind of game I would want to play in, but that doesn't mean that it's not a valid game, you know? That is, if you got the most out of it, all power to you, dude. All power to you. Oh, my God. I feel like taking this model down now, but I can't because it's such a nice and cool model. Moving on. Uh, Meat says, I've been listening to your videos for a while now. And I've been meaning to write this for a while, but it's a hard topic to write about for me. Okay. Some light stuff first, though. How do you keep your tea warm for an entire episode? Because you want a heathen who drinks cold tea, are you? Um, I do drink iced tea, but when I've got a tea here, normally I drink three quarters of it. And so it, uh, when it's nice and hot... And then when it starts to cool down, I just I just chug the last the last quarter. You know, you don't waste tea. Uh, okay, moving on. During first edition 30k, I played Mechanicum. What does that tell you about me? <laughs> what inspired me to write this was the story of of Smash Spring and Joshua. So I think you know where this is going to end. I don't really remember that uh, all of my hobby nightmares. So I'll have to get back to that in a minute. But what does play Mechanicum, tell you, well, maybe that you're a contrarian, because everyone's playing Space Marines and you're not, you know, maybe that's the way it is, I don't know. Um, I've been moving around my country quite a bit, and I have tried to find buddies to play with. Some places are easier than others to get to, though. In my previous town, I met one of my best friends. Let's call him Token. I don't want to ask why. I'm not going to ask why it's called Token, alright? We hit it off and enjoy playing together. He rolls like he has loaded dice, and I roll like I think I roll like I think ones means you're winning. However, I had to move to a new town about three hours away, so our gaming time decreased significantly. The new town I moved to didn't really have a wargaming scene, and the few who played only played Age of Sigmar. The only war game I didn't have any interest in playing. The group didn't want to branch out at all, so my wargaming kind of died out. At my new work, I did a, I did find a colleague that had my kind of humour and such. We hit off so well that if I had been gay, I would have left my fiancé and married him instead. He wasn't into wargaming though. Let's call him DP. Do, oh, do I want to know why you're calling him DP? <laughs> Token and DP. Okay. One weekend when Token visit, visited me, we forced D, DP to play a test game of 30k as he did enjoy the setting and other things I told him about. He took the bait hook, line and sinker, bought a 3,000 points White Scars 30k army later that day, as you do. When he got the things, he built his entire army and painted his first mini with guidance from me, but all on his own. See attached. Okay, uh, let's have a little look here. I'm guessing, sorry, that's me, not you. Oh, ba -ba -ba -ba. That's a pretty nice vehicle. I like that. One part of um, The Lost and the Damned that I was reading yesterday that I really liked was that they casually said that uh, before the Siege of Terror, Angron is sitting on a, uh, on, a, on, a, on, a on a spaceship, just standing there, chained to a spaceship, looking at Earth like... Rah! I just thought that was really, really cool. Um, don't know why that popped into my head. Right, let me just see where this is now. Here it is. That is a super close up. But it is a vehicle. There we go. Uh, that looks pretty cool. For a first time try, Jesus, that's really good. For a first time try. I like it. I like a lot. 
All right. Um, now, he'd been struggling with depression for a while. Both me and Token knew this and tried to support him as well as we could. He did go into therapy with mixed but mostly good results. Due to this, he didn't have much time to paint or play. Things finally started looking up. He felt better. We made some great plans for the coming year. We were going to go to a big Corvette meet, as I'm an old fart at heart, and he loved cooking. So we just grill and chill, and do the classic stand around a car looking at the engine with a beer thing. Go to his first 30k tournament, and if plans worked out, the three of us would go to Adepticon or the Las Vegas Open. Sadly, things were not meant to be. Another weekend, when me, Token and DP did our usual thing of cooking food, making crude jokes at each other's expense, and just having fun, he said he had to go home and recharge his social batteries, as these were known, known to us all to run out after a while. No problem, thought me, and, thought me and Token, and said we'd pick him up the day after, as there was gaming to do. After he left, I had a question for him, so I sent him a message and didn't get a reply. I just assumed he was sleeping or left his phone somewhere. At as he does the same from time to time. Later that evening, while me, my fiancé and Token were eating and having fun, I got a call I will never forget. His mother called me and said that he had uh, taken his own life. This was maybe an hour after he'd left us earlier and earlier that day. This was two years ago and I still miss him so much. I just want to talk to him, tell bad jokes and have fun, which sadly won't ever happen again. Sorry for the downer story, but I just wanted to share some of my memories with him. His one painted tank stands proudly in my display cabinet next to my best painted models. Thank you, North, for taking the time to read this and what you're doing for the community. Okay. Um, well, I can only... I can only pass on my condolences. That is that is truly tragic. That's horrible. Um, you know, and I really do hope that it wasn't his mother who found him. You know, I really, really... I know that sounds bad, but... That can really fuck a person up. I had I had a friend <clears throat> who I'm going to call Chris, and uh, he found his brother, and that guy was never the same again. That guy was never the same again. Eventually, he disappeared as well, and he disappeared off Facebook and all that sort of thing. So I don't think he had he ever did anything to himself, but I think he did. He just checked out and moved away, um, and I've never spoken to him again. He, we were really good friends, and I've just never been able to get in touch with him. He's not on Facebook. He's nowhere. Um, his mother didn't, you know, his mother didn't reply to any any messages that me, even me or any any of his other friends sent. I don't know what went on there, um, but it was weird, and he went completely off off reservation. And so, I really, really, really hope that it wasn't her who found him. This is, you know, um, what I will say on the flip side of this is that you here have done everything that you can. If you own a shred of guilt for this do not do so because if this guy went and did that a few hours after talking to you right he was going to do that regardless of what you said to him or did you know he he honestly felt that it was his time to go that that sounds horrible i know but th that's honestly what he felt there was i don't think there's anything that you could say or do in this situation that would have convinced him otherwise Especially if it was that soon after having a cheerful conversation with you. That dude has made up his mind. And what's more, the freaky thing is, he's at peace with it. He's com he, see he sounds completely at peace with it. If he's laughing and talking and, and having, a, having a good hobby time with you before he goes. And then just goes and does that. That, that just says to me that, that this guy's given up and is, and, is, and is at peace with the fact that he's given up. And he's not going to be here for much longer. That sounds awful, but... Dude, I've come across, before running this channel and since running this channel, I've come across quite a lot of stories like this. Not all people write, write it in to be read out, you know. But, uh, yeah, this this sounds like a guy who, who's, who's honestly at peace with, with, his, with his decision. Um, these are the guys that are hardest to save. And I honestly think that these are the type of guys who are only able to be saved by professionals. You know, guys like you and me can't save these people. These are the guys who need an actual professional to, to dig into their brain and find what's there and start massaging it out and, and saving them and saving them and saving them until finally, like, they, they act like um, stabilizers on a, on a bike for a newborn, for, for a kid, right? And eventually, 
they can take the stabilizers away and the guy's not going to fall over. If you look, we look at falling over as committing suicide, right, on the bike, then what a really good therapist is, is those stabilizers on the bike keeping you there, reminding you that you're safe and you're okay, and carry on and carry on and carry on. And before you know it, he takes the stabilizers away without you noticing. And you go, oh my god, I'm doing this on my own. Right? And if you need him, he comes back and attaches them again. And that's what he does. Uh, that's professional help. This guy needed professional help. You did everything that you could do to aid this guy with the skill set that you had. You went above and beyond for this guy, man. You know? It just didn't work out. And I'm really sorry it didn't work out. I'm really sorry that you lost a friend. But uh, this is why we do mental health on the channel. And this is why we try and make sure that uh, we're giving to to good charities that deal with male mental health because the overwhelming... Somebody asked me the other day, why don't you just give to, to a suicide uh, prevention charity? Because the vast majority of suicides are men. And the vast majority of the apparatus that are in the world are designed to fuck men over mentally right now. Right? Absolutely. I absolutely believe that with every core fibre of my being. This entire world is designed to get you to top yourself if you're a guy. Literally. Literally. They don't want us here anymore. Right? I don't mean people on a singular. I don't mean women. Right? I mean society. Human society. There, there, there are, are... If you ask them, there are too many men. Good. We're calling the herd. Right? That's what they'll say. It's bullshit. I hate it. It's unfair. And while I'm here, there will always be a refuge for you. There will always be a channel for you to come and speak your mind, you know, talk some shit, have some friends, and never be left behind. That's what this channel is all about. You know, God's soldier never leaves a man behind and all that. Well, and we're not going to. Right? We, we don't do that on this channel. Okay? All right. Love you all a long time. I will speak to you very, very, very soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And yeah, uh, please keep your chin up, keep going. I'm here, everyone's here, no one wants to see you go anywhere. Love you all a long time, have a good one, see you on Monday, bye.